Hi guys, let's take out our review packet and turn to the page on biotechnology. The first topic that we're going to talk about is selective breeding. Selective breeding is going to be when you mate or cross two organisms together to obtain the desired traits. What we did was we watched a video on the super cow. Remember the super cow was when they were trying to find the most muscular cow and make it mate with another muscular cow. Then the desired outcome was that the offspring would also have big muscles so that it could find the leanest meat and then sell it. Other examples that maybe we're familiar with are breeding horses. This is going to be when you find two fast horses, right, a male and a female, you make them mate, and then the offspring will also hopefully have that desired characteristic. We also talked a little bit about corn and how corn started off as an organism known as teosinte. And it's not something that we would really be able to easily eat, but over years and years of selective breeding, we now have edible corn that has large sweet kernels. Next up, we have the term genetic engineering. Genetic engineering has some keywords associated with it. Alter, change, insert. Alter and insert are really the words that you see most frequently. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find a gene that we're interested in and insert it into another organism. So first up, the steps are identify a gene. Remember, a gene is a segment of DNA. So we're not saying that we're going to put all of the DNA of an organism into another organism. Instead, we find the one gene that we want, and we're going to go and we're going to put that gene into a different organism's gene. I'm sorry, into a different organism's DNA. Once you find it, you're going to go and you're going to remove that gene. Then you can insert the gene into the organism you want. And then finally, it's going to make the desired protein. So. What do we use to remove the gene and then also to insert it? Well, we're going to use an enzyme. Remember, an enzyme is a specific protein that's going to cut the DNA in a specific spot. A lot of times we kind of use the analogy that they're scissors. Another name for an enzyme, remember, could be an organic catalyst. And you're going to use a specific enzyme because you want to make sure that you don't cut any section of the gene that you want. The next thing is, why are we doing this? You have a segment of DNA. Remember that segment of DNA is going to code for protein. That's the really, really important part. This gene that we found and identified makes a protein. The proteins that we're usually interested in are insulin and HGH. These are super important. Insulin, remember, is responsible for regulating blood sugar. HGH is responsible for growth because it's really just human growth hormone. Growth of muscles, growth of bones. These we used to not be able to give people. We used to have to get insulin from a cow or a pig. Now we actually can safely make it in the lab using E. coli, a type of bacteria. How does it work? If you look down here, you'll see that this is a classic picture of genetic engineering that they use on the regions. Here we have DNA. This is all the DNA, but we don't want that. We just want a tiny little segment. So our first step is to identify the gene. Once you have the gene, you then have to cut the gene. And remember, we're going to be using enzymes to do this. Now you'll see I don't have a whole segment of DNA. I just have a little tiny segment. That's my gene of interest. Over here, we have the bacterial cell. The bacterial cell, notice the DNA in there is circular. We called that a plasmid. Just like on the top, we also have to go and cut this. This time though, we're not cutting out any of the DNA. We're keeping all of the DNA for the bacteria present. 
And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sticking those two together. So here I have my bacterial plasmid DNA. I've used, a, I've used an enzyme to cut it. And now my next step is to glue them back together again. So step number three is to glue the DNA. Again, we're using an enzyme. Now that I've combined these two types of DNA, I refer to this structure here as recombinant DNA. This name makes sense, but a lot of times we forget it. Note here, it actually has the word combine in it though, which is what I've done. I've taken that little segment of human DNA and I've actually combined it with the bacterial DNA. This is when you combine DNA. After I've done that, my next step is to put it back into that bacterial cell. That bacterial cell is now really good at making more copies of itself. It makes more copies of itself using asexual reproduction. If it asks for the type of cell division, it would be mitosis. If it asks for the type of reproduction, we're talking about asexual. Remember, asexual makes an exact copy. What that means is every single one of these are capable of making the new protein. What types of proteins again? This is where we're talking about hormones, such as human growth hormone, and then also insulin. This whole picture here, once again, this is your genetic engineering. So we're altering or changing the DNA of an organism by inserting a gene into it. Other examples we talked about were the strawberries and tomatoes where they inserted the antifreeze gene into it. Uh, we talked about how a lot of our corn and our soy products are also genetically modified. Okay, flip over, there's one more section of this. And that is going to be our gel electrophoresis. We actually did two simulations of this this year. Gel electrophoresis separates based on size using an electric current. If we're looking to the right at our diagram, what you will notice is that I have wells. Remember, my wells are always going to be my starting gates. That's where if I had my pipette, I would pipette DNA into each one of these. Before I do that, I have to remember to actually cut my DNA. Just like on the other page, I would use enzymes in order to cut it. Then I run an electric current. On this side, it would be negative, and on this side, it would be positive. Because of that, DNA runs out of the well. Remember, DNA has a negative charge. Since it has a negative charge, it's going to be attracted to that positive side. That's what the electric current does. If you do not have the electric current, the DNA would just stay in the well. It wouldn't go anywhere. Once you go and you flip on the switch, the DNA is attracted to the positive side. Why are all of these bands in different spots? That has to do with the size of the band. If we're looking up here, the ones that are closest to the start, those are going to be the largest bands. Remember, the large bands are going to lag, meaning they're going to be closest to the starting gate. The band down here, which is the furthest, that's going to be a small band. Remember, the small bands are going to be swift. They're able to move very, very quickly. Another thing to note, which we can't really tell here, is that each one of these actually represents a little bit of that genetic code. So they show it really just as bands, but if we were to look at it, it actually has genetic code. It has those letters that we've been talking about the whole time. So when I say large, I mean they have the most molecular basis. And when I have to say small, I mean they have the least molecular basis. So remember the small ones are swift, 
and the larger ones are going to lag. Why might we use this to identify suspects at a crime scene and also for paternity testing? In order to figure out how closely related things are, remember you would match up the bands. And the ones that have the most similar bands are going to be the ones that are most closely related. Like if we're looking at B and D, what you might notice is that actually all of their bands match up. We also have cloning. Cloning is something we did when we did uh, reproduction as well. Cloning makes an exact copy of another organism. Cloning makes an exact copy. And that's who's ever going to be the body cell donor. So exact copy of the body cell donor. And finally, many people do have problems with cloning and other types of genetic manipulation. And the reason for that is moral and ethical reasons. People see it as playing God, so they're not really comfortable with the idea of doing this.